Okay, first up is Terra, and uh, yeah, I like the graveyard background. Um, the zombie version of the character, that's interesting, different, looks good. Um, I think from the point of view of camera, that's a good wide shot, and looks like you're using some paint effects, which is alright. Uh, maybe the trees are a bit too white. Maybe get those a little darker. You know, the, the whiteness of these. Kind of, I think as your eyes are jumped to the highest contrast points in the frame, and which are those white objects next to the dark background, and that kind of distracts from the character, so I would kind of darken those some so that they're not so contrasty. Just take a look at what's going on in Maya. Um, I mean, I think what I like is that you have indeed made, you know, a simple set, which is pretty usable. Um, I'm a little concerned with the seam between these two sections. Um, And, uh, yeah, making that um, seamless is a bit of an issue. So, I'm just wondering where these images came from. Whether you kind of painted them or just found them somewhere. Um, I see that this one does that repeat? Looks like this is a repeated version of that. Oh, that's interesting. That's projected on there. Ah. That's this thing is projecting on what's going on with this guy. For some reason my move tool isn't showing up. I'm gonna need to restart Maya. Um because what occurs to me is that if you're just projecting anyway, what you could do is do one big projection and then it would be seamless. Um, across the different surfaces. So like, um, let me just see if we do the hyper shade. Let me clear graph and show up in downstream connections. Is that what that is? I'll rearrange. Oh, here we go. Show me put output. So it's this one. So let's say we assign that one material to all three of these. Um, okay, now I don't know what the heck happened. It was weird because I, as soon as I left and came back, this. Oh, is it uh, two-sided lighting? Is it, oh, okay. So what I was thinking is, if we just take this one, you know, kind of like that. Um, but then, maybe instead of like, something like this, maybe if you took this thing and then, bent it or something, um, to form nonlinear bend, and rotate this around, Oop. like so, something like that. Well, 
it didn't quite reach all the way around, but that's, yeah, it's just not quite long enough to really, you know, without stretching it some, but, you know, you're a little bit more limited there. Let's try curving it more, see, see what we get, bending it more. I mean, you get, you know, you sort of have to be careful about the angles. And you could always, like, cheat a little bit. Like, let's Alt-Shift-T, Delete History. Because what I would do then, it's like, if I, like, you know, wanted to get over here and I saw the seam, I might take this and just go, like, you know. Or, uh... I also might, well, once this is on here, you could, uh, enter, is that a rendering? Let's create texture reference object. Yeah, create texture reference object. And that way, um, the, uh, the position of the projection doesn't matter anymore after you do that. And then you can move this you know, around a little bit. So I could adjust that per shot if needed. Like if I was running into that seam over there or you know, I could cheat it over here a little bit or that kind of thing. So that would be a way to get a little closer to making it seamless. It's just, it's tough to just take this one image and try to use it to wrap around, you know, basically 180 degrees because it's just not that. The image doesn't have necessarily 180 degrees of information and so if you try to do that it's going to look a little stretched or have seams like the way the, the other way you did it so I'm trying to find a compromise without you having to create additional images um, but uh, I mean yeah it's a workable set you know other things you could do to improve is um, have the terrain not to be perfectly flat um, so it could be interesting to give this some um, you know I'm just you know, very quickly roughing this out, but it'll be for soft select, and like you could, you know, add some, uh, depending on what kind of animation you want to do. I mean, it will make it harder to have them walk and stuff if the ground's uneven, but also it doesn't have to be uneven where the character walks. It could be uneven in other parts of the set. So, yeah, just a few ideas for you. Uh, you mentioned some issues with the hands. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Nothing there, and nothing here. Does it move with the whole character? Okay, well, that's good. Oh, not so good. Okay, so for that, um, because you've correctly used referencing, which is good. Um, I can see you've referenced everything in. I mean, I might not have gone quite so nuts with referencing so many different files in. Uh, the most important thing is that you've referenced your character in. Um, so uh, I'm just going to open up this, the source file, and not try to fix it in here, but fix it in the one that's being referenced in, which is kind of the whole point, is that you can fix that out separately, and then it'll update in the fix in the this file. So. I'm just gonna hide joints. And I might start by, hold on. I might start by uh, resetting the pose, okay. And my camera's acting funny. I'm gonna go to default view. That usually helps, okay. All right, so let's see where we are again with this. Okay, nothing, but wow. Okay, so our hand shape, our hand. Okay, so again, you got to take a step back. This is where I think you've instanced the the hand. So. Um, you can't do that. Um, whoops. 
we can just the way we can check is if I pick some verts on one, it picks it on the other, and that means it's instance. And you, that's not gonna, it's just never, it was not gonna work while the hand was instance. So um, let's start by uh, we can either delete history or unbind. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, but let's uh, I'll go ahead and unbind those hands. You know, Alt Shift D to delete history to make sure. Then I have to take one of these hands and I have to do modify convert instance to object. Okay. So now should have different names now. But I don't know. Um, the point is now that there, that it's no longer an instance, you can see that the verge didn't move together. Okay, now it's going to be possible to bind these correctly. And I think what I did was just sort of select the points manually. Um, group, main, deformation system, shift click to open up all those. Let's start with his right hand. Um, I'll start with the wrist and oops, where do we go? Uh, and er, all the fingers below it. If I show joints for a second, you should see all those are selected. Okay. And uh, shift select the hand surface and skin bind skin options selected joints. Importantly, let's try heat map. I feel like I did this already. Um, okay, that's working. That's yeah, not great. Gotta fix that. All right, well, let's go ahead and fix that, I guess. So, I'm just gonna isolate this for a second. I think, actually, let me make a. Let me go back. This is before I, I just undid a few levels. I think we want to get, let's get all those elbows in there too. So we've got those, we've got the hand, and let's bind it that way. Bind skin options, selected joints, heat map, bind skin. I think we're gonna get get the wrist, better chance of the wrist not poking through. Let's turn off x-ray. And when I do this, yeah, better, good. And this that looks pretty good. Okay, yay. All right, and let's just do it again here. So we had more success. Let's find the left. Let's start with uh, yeah elbow actually, and all the way down to the fingertips. Shift select the hand, skin bind skin options. Select a joint heat map, bind skin. Oh, I thought, you know, we could try mirroring the weights. Let's give that a shot. See, because when I do this, this side, it's not going through. I did include, let me just undo a few steps. I did include the elbow this time. Hmm. I'm going to redo some reason it didn't do it as nicely over here. Um, let's see if we can mirror the skin weights and see if that'll fix it. So this to this skin mirror options across the YZ plane. We're doing from the negative side. I can see that's positive, so that's negative. So turn that off because it's the opposite mirror. And nope. <laughs> I don't know if this hand's somehow different from the one across. Control F9 to convert selection there to points. Um, paint weights tool. Not the only influence. Did 
did this not work? Oh, I thought we, let me undo. I think the mirror didn't work, maybe. Okay, I just did undo the mirror thing. Ugh. So this is before the bind again. So I'm going to try binding again. I don't know. Light skin options. Select a joint heat map. Oh, is this where I had to, like, I ended up duplicating the surface over to the other side because it was acting weird? Yeah, that's not working. Okay. So I'm going to delete this one. And where's that? That's there. Let's select these. Right mouse click. Unlock selected. Uh, duplicate. Scale of negative one to get that to the opposite side. Um, let's rename this R hand. And freeze transforms. Modify freeze transformations. Alt shift D to delete history. Alright, now I don't know what the deal is. So something's funny with the geometry, so select all these and then find skin, select the joints heat map. Okay. Okay, good and good. So I'm going to save as uh, I would probably do something call it smooth 06, you know, fix hands or something. And then if you want to get this into your scene, this is a good lesson for everyone. What we can do is uh, open scene. We've got setting. And the setting scene references in. Yeah, I don't think you need that in quite so many pieces, but you can. Wait, one thing you could do. A couple things. So first of all, let's show fixing this guy. So it's using this smooth model five, which has the broken hands. Um, as you can see, if I try to do this, it's not working. So uh, what I can do is reference, replace reference, this fixed one, and reference that in. Give it a second. Is it working? continue okay looks the same but fixed hand and fixed hand okay the other thing you can do is I think this is it. I don't know why you have all these things referenced in I think that's totally unnecessary so to kind of turn that into one file I can do file import objects from reference for can I do the multiple of those at the same time? Okay, so now the only thing that's referenced in the character, and I'll save this as, like, call it setting mode 2 or something like that. So now um, you've only got the one thing referenced in. Um, and, uh, and the character is fixed. So I'll go ahead and post those files for you. Okay, this is Zorong, and um, yeah, um, got a few shots in here. Looks like you're rendering with Arnold, which is okay, but wasn't really necessary for this yet. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think this uh, background is going to be sufficient. Um, I think the idea is to model a simple set, um, and there's, you know, uh, in your Maya file, if we take a look there's just these few planes. Also, it would seem that your character that you're using is broken. Um, so, just wondering what's going on with that. Um, I 
back so it looks backwards, like the character is facing the opposite the direction of the rig, which I'm not sure how that happened. Um, be interested to pull in the. I'm just going to open up the character by itself. And yeah, this is broken in this file too. So that's interesting. Um, oh, and this file has pl planes in it. So you've. Right, your character file has stuff. In it. And, oh. Sorry, I'm going to open up this file. This one messed up like that. Oh no, this one's fine. So, oh, the foot's kind of broken, but it's um, something that happened in the uh, after you imported it. You did something. I don't know what you did to get it to face backwards and kind of be broken like that. Maybe you did move the model somehow. Yeah, and the foot needs to be fixed. So I might just. Are we missing joints here, or... No, it doesn't seem to be. So, to fix the foot, what I would do is... Um, uh, first, I'll detach this foot, unbind it. Uh, then I'll pop open... No, not the geo, the screw. Um, Shift-click on deformation system. This is his left foot. So let's find the left, maybe start with the knee down to the toes, shift select the foot, skin, bind skin, options, selected joints, I'll try heat map, bind, okay, see if that's working now, yep, the foot's staying flat now, and see if that roll is working. Okay, yeah, not too bad. So I'll save this for you and post it in case you want to use that. Module 8 skeleton, we just will call this 07 foot fix. Um, and I'll post that for you. But yeah, the, um, the environment you've built is, uh, I would say, insufficient for doing very much with. And, uh, you know, I would, I would do a more fleshed out environment. Um, and I think I mentioned, you know, to avoid doing things in the art outdoors or, or at least things that have like a, what I would call sort of a, a horizon line, you know, don't try to do things with a horizon line in it because that makes things difficult. So do a more sort of enclosed looking s smaller area set that you can build realistically. Uh, next up is Xenon and uh, yeah, this is coming along quite nicely. Um, I think, you know, you're you know you're a limited, a little bit limited in the camera angles you can do because if you turn too much here, you start to get that. But I think you could, you know, you've got room to move here. You might want to extend the sidewalk out forward a bit more, so you have a little bit more ground to work with there because otherwise, you gotta, you got to be pretty tight on here to not see the. Uh, the edge of that, so I might get a little bit more foreground there, um, but I think you could work with this. I mean, part of it is that you're gonna, yeah, you could have kind of a wide shot there and show a lot of the nice detail you've built. I think this is looking good. I think, you know, you've got a lot of nice stuff going down. I really like these wires you've done, some of that kind of little detail here with the lamppost and the sort of corrugated metal thing going here, and not exactly sure what that is, but it looks kind of cool. So, um, that's some kind of fence, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall this looks really nice. Uh, so it's good good work on putting a set together. I think you're going to want to get some colors and textures on there. Um, uh, and, the, and then part of the assignment was to do uh, three different shots. So, like, plan out what camera angles you could use in this environment. So that would be good. And it, w it would probably reveal things like, you know, I need more foreground here, you know, like, so you might just be able to 
you know, pull, whoops. That didn't work. Huh. Nope. Anyway, uh, what I was going to say is you could just take this and pull this, you know, like that, something like that, and then you've got a little bit more to work with here, you know, when you're doing different shots, a little bit more ground, maybe even further. So yeah, now I've got a little bit more to, you know, comfort zone on the bottom there. Um, more room to play around. So, but yeah, good, good set. Lots of nice detail. Let's turn off the uh, wireframe unshaded, and um, sometimes it's hard to see like that. So on the renderer here on viewport 2.0, if I turn on uh, ambient occlusion and uh, anti-aliasing, it's like a little. Sometimes it's easier to see the detail that way um, than with the shading on and all that. The, the wireframe unshaded. But yeah, good work. Next up is Daisy, and uh, yeah, it's a very nice interior. It looks I like that there's a consistent look to the kind of style of the furniture and the artwork. Um, I think that's good. Some nice flowers there. I don't, you know, that's a kind of an extreme shot to have this guy so close in the frame. Uh, with the background as far away as it is, but, you know, not out of the question. Uh, let's take a look at the my file. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see what you've done here. Um, yeah, I mean, I really, I think this is definitely the right idea. Uh, I like these chairs. Um, I like that you've even put in that stuff in the bottom. This thing looks nice, and the texture works on there really well. And these are cool. Is that from Paint Effects or originally? Or did you? Anyways, it's good. Looks like it's maybe from Paint Effects. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Cool. And some nice little objects here to flesh it out, and some modern artwork, and this plant looks... Oh, is that just an image? Ah! You definitely got away with that, because I didn't know that that was a flat image. Nice job. Just know that if you, you know, if you ever came around this far, you would just want to, you know, rotate it with that and move it around. But, uh, I think this works well. I think you've got the right idea. I think you have room to move and a nice set. I think I might... I think you maybe maybe some more of a texture on the walls instead of just a solid color. Uh, what you've got going on here looks sort of stretched. You know, it's just stretched lines, but you kind of got away with it. Um, I'm just gonna delete history and uh, is this using a So why is that like projection texture down there or something? Uh, I'm just wondering why it looks so stretched out. Let me see before I deleted the history off of that. Planar projection. Or is that just the, um, like the UV map or something? Oh, well, that's probably that. Yeah, it's just like a cross-section of the whole thing. So, actually, if you're going to do planar projection, you, what you would do is, uh, it's under, do we have that stuff for modeling? UV. Um, you could probably have just used the default UVs, but um, if you're going to do planar, it should be in the uh, Y-axis. 
and now what you see is that we've got the floor texture back and that looks much much better so yeah um, from here you might want to do um, some UV repeat just for the scaling so um, go to here go to here and place 2D texture and maybe like 4 and 4 in the UV direction and that's yeah maybe a little bit better so now yeah you see all that detail instead of that stretched out thing you had so the main thing I did was under UV I did planar options and then chose in the y-axis so it's pointing up at it and you can see it fits the whole thing nicely over that um, so they have a little fix with UV but you probably could have just used the default one it would have been alright um, character stuff so um, where are the controls oh you've got a bunch of stuff turned off in here no? I don't know why I'm not seeing the character controls. Is he referenced in? Huh. Let's open up that file, see what's going on. I guess we're under here? No. Oh. Did you? No rig. Oh, okay. Well, you imported a version of character with no rig. Oh, that's why if the rig isn't working. Um, so do we have the one with the rig in here? Probably not. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I covered the rig issues last time, so just let me know if you have any more questions with those. I'd be happy to help with that. Okay, next up is Sam. And uh, definitely rig idea with this um, simple set. Looks like you have some rig issues here with this guy. Um, but yeah, I like that you've done three very different angles, kind of very usable type things. You've got some textures. I think the windows look weird right now. Um, uh, but I like that you have the brick texture and the ground texture on there. That you've posed the character in the three different shots, that's good. Uh, let's take a look at the Maya file. Um, one thing is that uh, the assignment mentions using archive scene, so when you send this to me, do you file um, archive scene and send me the zip file it creates, and then I'll have all the textures along with it. Right now, I don't have those textures because uh, you just sent the Maya scene file. But uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit limiting here, but I thought that your your three images showed how you can work with this kind of set, and I think it's sufficient. Um, you know, if you had a little something over here, you know, maybe to give you the opportunity to go there, like, I don't know, if you filled in something like that, you'd have a little bit more flexibility, but it's definitely sufficient, and it's definitely the right idea. I would try something different for the windows, maybe have some window pane separators on there. This looks a little... Like, I don't know what that is. Is that an awning? I might look at some reference for that and get a better sort of awning thing going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, it, it works, and it's the right idea, um, and it's a usable set. I just think it could be a little bit more fleshed out, better awning, better texture on the windows, maybe window pane separators, um, and uh, think about, you know, adding a little bit somewhere there if, if you need it. Um, for the rig stuff... Um, oh, this is, it's not referenced in, so I kind of wouldn't want to do much on the rig here, but, uh, the only thing I'm noticing is the arms are just looking a little, um, I don't know, rubbery, uh, the way they're bending here. Oh, and you've got some issues with the hand affecting that, so send me the, the rig file where it's not in the scene. And also, you're supposed to reference him in, um, where is reference editor? So you have it referenced in him. So rather than importing it, you to do file, importing the character in the scene, you're supposed to do file, create reference, and bring it in that way, uh, rather than importing it or just building it in the same scene. So the idea would be to take all of the character stuff out of here, 
um, delete those out. Um, if there's any other weird stuff in here, let me take all this stuff out. I don't know what all that is. Um, and then for your set, you know, get this stuff organized. Maybe call that set. And then, you know, save this scene. And then to bring your character in, you create reference and bring in your rig file. Uh, and then you can fix your rig file separately from the scene. Okay.